Good morning, everybody. Thank you for showing up, uh, so many of you. Um, just to inform you before we start the keynote, the next keynote, uh, on stage A, normally we would have had Michael Crail, head of uh, business development from Geizhals, one of our sponsors. Unfortunately, he had a last minute accident, so he can't make it. But instead of, we're now having Peter Svoboda, and he's giving us some information about the general data protection regulations, which is going to be uh, enforceable from May 18. So give us a very warm welcome for Mr. Svoboda. Hello, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for coming in last minute. Mr. Svoboda comes in from Czech, and uh, we are all looking forward to see his presentations. Thank you. So hello again. I hope that the information about GDPR will be valuable for you as well. Um, so I'm CEO of Shopsys Company, uh, and I'm here to share our know-how of implementing features for GDPR compliance. And I want to, my goal is to ensure you that GDPR is not a, such a big deal. Uh, so let's jump in. So GDPR is here because of protection of user data in today's digital era. Uh, and it's because most of user data protection laws in EU countries was created, were created like 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. But today, most of data are stored digitally. User data provides controlled user data flow between all companies and subjects in your supply chain. User consent, it requires user consent to proceed their data. And prevention, and the main goal is the prevention of user data leaks. And it's the same regulation across all European countries countries, so any country is not allowed to change it, to modify, only to translate. But be aware that even local countries can have another regulations, like, for example, typically customer protection regulation that also affect e-commerce. So what is the agenda? We will go through the data subject, data control, and data processor, and the relationship between them, obligations and customizations, customer rights, especially customer rights, privacy, privacy policy consent, and recommendations and additional customizations. And I also sum up with the most important takeaways. So I want to introduce you to this diagram. So in the middle, you can see e-retailer, so e-commerce site, like you. There is an obligation to record of, to have records of all processing of personal data. On the left side, you can see data subjects, so customers and employees. There is obligation, information obligation for that, mostly given by, by privacy policy consent. On the, your right side, there are data processors, like your payroll clerk, marketing agency, software provider, and those data processors the processors can even have another suppliers like server provider. So GDPR requires to have contract on the processing of personal data between you, retailer, the agencies, or all the suppliers, and even between the suppliers. So now move to all features that are needed or recommended for GDPR as we don't have a lot of time. So we have prepared the document with all the specification, user stories, acceptance criteria, and wireframes. So feel free to use it. You can give it to your developers, to your software agency, and just tell them, hey, this is the definition, this is the specification, and let's do it. So feel free to use it. It will save you a lot of time. So let's go through the customer rights. So the first customer right is to right to access. So any customer can ask you or request the retailer for all personal data gathered, and you have to provide it in 30 days. So in terms of features, your administration panel of e-commerce platform can provide a feature to search the user and export the user. It's not necessary. You can do it manually, but in in if it's too often, we re really recommend to provide that feature. Another right is the right to be forgotten. So any customer can ask you to erase all the data you have about him. 
but be sure that there are even other legal duties like accounting, archiving, uh, so you don't have to do all the erasing because you have to store some data because of other legal duties. And it's the similar, so administration panel can provide feature for searching and erasing some of the data. Another right is right to transfer of information. So any customer can decide to change provider. Uh, in terms of e-commerce, uh, e-commerce associations agreed uh, that you should provide import and ex export of user data and order history. So sh Shopsys and Czech e-commerce association prepared even XML template for that import and export, so feel free to use it, it's open sourced. Another user right is to write to be informed by three layered information, which is a term from Working Party 29, and it's required. So the first layer, as you will see on the next slide on the wireframe, is just the sentence along the checkbox with the agreement, and it must be easily understandable. Second layer is a paragraph describing how you handle with the data, and it also has to be easily understandable. And finally, or I will tell you that there are like a two options how to do it. So first option is by, by hovering bubble over the first layer. Second option is to insert the summary on the top of third layer. And third layer is full version of the privacy policy. So as you can see here, on the wireframe, this one, this is the first layer, the checkbox with the sentence with the link to the third layer, so the document with privacy policy, which is mostly a legal document. And this is the second layer, the hovering bubble with the paragraph. Another option is to insert second layer here on the document with the privacy policy. So it's up to you. Uh, we recommend and even uh, authorities recommend the option uh, with the hovering bubble. Privacy policy consent. So I will go through all parts of, of front ends of e-commerce sites. It's mostly still the same, but I just want to put it there to not forget for anything. So the first typical panel is newsletter or promotion subscribe. So you have to insert consent to privacy policy by unchecked checkbox, you have to lock the date and time. We also strongly recommend you to use versioning of the document of privacy policy. Because you have to have like the specific textation, specific meaning of the privacy policy consent that user uh, agreed. So there are even other recommended options. So the double opt-in and the bubble, hovering bubble for the second level of three-layered information. So this is the wireframe. It's easy, typical, typical inputs with the checkbox, uh, with for la for first layer, or even with the second layer with hovering bubble, with the link to the privacy policy. The same applies for user registration. So we can just go to the wireframe slide. So this is the typical user re registration application inputs, and you will add this checkbox uh, with agree with the privacy policy here. It's become a little bit complicated with the order application, because there are many ways and many forms or version of it. So first version is, is if the order application has only inputs needed for order processing. In that case, you don't have to provide or ask for a consent to privacy policy. You just need to inform the user. Uh, in that case, there is also need for standalone checkbox for uh, newsletter or promotions, since you can send it to all your customers, but never forget for unscribing option. And it's also recommended to insert second layer information bubble. So the wireframe is pretty easy, so it's typically order form. Um, most of European countries and most of European e-commerce sites use 
checkbox with agreement with the terms and conditions. So to make it easy for a user, we just recommend to add the following option, I acknowledge the privacy policy. So it's pretty easy. Uh, it's becoming a little bit complicated if you use third-party service for, for post-purchase survey. In that case, authorities recommends or requires to use standalone checkbox for the agreement with the survey. Authorities recommends unchecked checkbox, <laughs> since survey providers usually recommend to have it checked. Um, it's up to you. I definitely recommend to have it unchecked. So the wireframe, everything is the same, and this is the ch checkbox added for agreement with the post-purchase survey if it's sent by third party. Another option is if you ask for 444, four, four, I'm, I get a little bit lost. It, if you ask for data that are not needed for order processing, like age, sex, and other data, so in that case, you have to put it separately. So this was the form like before, then you added some additional data, like age, sex, and there is another agreement with the privacy policy. You can't enforce that, so it means if user check just this checkbox and don't agree with uh, and doesn't agree with the uh, privacy policy uh, for those data, you still have to save the order without the data. Um, the same applies for registration in your order. So typical uh, order application and then user registration option with the agreement of the privacy policy. You can, I see few few of you making a pictures. Uh, I will give you all the deck, all the presentation and even the document so you can use it even later on. Um, so, same applies for other parts of your website, like loyalty programs, competitions. So it's still the same. Insert the agreement, the consent to privacy policy. And it's still the same with reviews and discussions. So add this checkbox. User tracking consent is a little complicated thing, but it's uh, it, it's separate legislation from GDPR called e-privacy, and, it, and it's not valid yet. We have to wait for a valid version. It's ex it is expected that you will be allowed to save third-party cookies, uh, and probably even third-party cookies with the anonymous data, in case that you will save uh, co like specific data of the users you will allowed to save it after the agreement of the user. But once again, it is not a valid version of e-privacy, so we recommend you to wait. Let's go to some other recommended customizations. So authorities fairly, fairly recommend to use double opt-in. It is, it is mostly not the best thing for marketing agencies. But we really recommend you to do that because this verifies identity of the email address owner and even your database with those verified email address is much more valuable because your users or email owners are more active later on. So it's easy after filling the, for, for example, uh, promotion, subscription or newsletter you just send to user a confirmation email, and after confirming by the user, you will save it into your database. Another recommendation is to use encrypt communication, so migrate your website to HTTPS, and we strongly recommend to do the security audit of your e-commerce site, and we recommend to follow OWASP Top 10, which handles with uh, SQL injections, broken authentication, etc. So the typical ways how to hack the website and get the data. So be sure that most of 
penalties or fines from authorities are given because of data leaks, user data leaks. Some additional customizations. So there are many hoaxes around GDPR. One of the hoaxes is data pseudonymization. So it's not required. It's only recommended by Working Party 29. Uh, it's a very complicated solution because you store all encrypted data and you, then you have encryption key on other server. You communicate through API, so it's typically very slow and difficult solution, but you don't have to have it on your website. You can also do anonymization of data, especially when your developers copy the database. You can anonymize the data, and there is an ability to reverse decryption. Description. So it's really recommended for your developers or for software agencies. You can also monitor and log all the access, accesses to the data in administration panel or on the server. And that's it. So what are the most important and simplified takeaways? So add consent to the privacy policy when asking for user data, except the data for execution of the order. But most of orders have even other data or registration, user registration. So mostly add the consent to the privacy policy. Make security audit and migrate to HTTPS to prevent data leaks. And this is really important as the most of penalties are given just because you send your promotion email even to users that unscribe. So always provide an unscribe option in your promotion emails. And it brings us even to the topic how to handle with your current data. So we recommend to split it into three parts. So first, first group is, a, is uh, the database of the users of the customers. So the users after the order, let's say within two years, you can send the promotion emails to them, of course, with unsubscribe option. Second group are users that freely allowed to get promotion emails by, for example, the application form, even without the GDPR legislation, without the privacy co policy consent as it is right now. So you can continue with sending the promotions to them, but of course, again, with unsubscribe option. And then there is a third group, the rest, and it's really recommended to ask that user to consent with the privacy policy again. So send them an email that you want to send them another special offers, promotion, etc. but you need another consent from them. That's it. Everything you can find on our microsite gdpr.shopsys.com. You will find the deck here. You will find the specification of all features that are needed and that I went through. So, and we also develop all the features, or we are developing all the features I mentioned uh, to our open source e-commerce platform for uh, fast growing e-commerce sites. So your developers can be also inspired by that features because it's open sourced. Well, that's it, and let's move to Q&A. All right, thank you, Peter. If we have a time. Thank you.